Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation with complex numbers. We have 1 plus square root of 3 times i to the power m equals 1 minus square root of 3i to the power n and we're going to be solving for m and n values. m and n are integers so we're going to be looking at integer solutions. Are there non-integer solutions? Are there complex non-real solutions to this equation? We can also discuss that if we have time at the end. So let's go ahead and take a look. This is a really interesting equation because the bases are different and they are not reciprocals. Why do I say that? Because if the bases are, were reciprocals, then we would have an easy time. For example, think about another scenario. Suppose we had one half plus root 3 over 2i to the power m, or maybe I can use it different variables like x, and 1 half minus root 3 over 2i to the power y. Now, in this case, we know that when we multiply these two things, we get 1, which means they are reciprocals, but they are also conjugates, complex conjugates, right? So basically what that means is we can write one of them, like this one, as the reciprocal of the other which means it can be written as 1 half to the power root 3 over 2i to the power negative 1. And when you do the replacement, you get something like this, which makes this problem a lot easier. So something like this you're going to be getting at the end. Of course, you might be questioning like, does y to the power negative 1 is always negative y when y is complex? That's a good question. I think that should work because one of them is an integer. But anyways, at this, in this scenario, you probably notice that solution will be fairly easy because we have the same base. But we don't have that luxury here. They are different and they're not reciprocals. So what do we do then? We use another strategy, which is thanks to Euler, Euler's formula or polar form. So let's go ahead and convert these expressions into polar form because as is, it's very difficult to handle. So let's go ahead and do this. First of all, 1 plus root 3i. How do you express that in the coordinate plane? In other words, the argon plane, you can plot 1 plus root 3i. That's going to be like 1 unit this way and root 3i unit this way, or root 3 units this way. It doesn't matter how you look, depending on how you look at it. So you get a point like this. And you can plot it as a point or as a vector. And you get an angle which is theta. In this case, that happens to be 60 degrees or you can call it pi over 3 radius. It's always important uh, to express that in radians, not in degrees. You don't want to do that, right? Radians are better. And you can obviously uh, add multiples of 2 pi because if you add 2 pi, like pi over 3 plus 2 pi, that's basically equivalent to the same point on the unit circle or uh, any circle. So we can write this as a general solution. But where do we go from here? Well, we can kind of write 1 plus root 3i using the modulus, the distance from 0, which is 2 units, and then multiply this by e to the power i times theta, which happens to be pi over 3 in this case. Great, because generally we can write a complex number z as r times e to the i theta, where r is the modulus or the absolute value, and theta is the argument of the, or the angle. Again, there are multiple values for it, so instead of writing just pi over 3, I'm just going to add multiples of 2 pi to it to express it in the most general form. Okay, we're going to be doing the same thing for 1 minus root 3i, but by the way, I just want to say a couple words. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. And if you like algebra, number theory, trigonometry problems, go ahead and check out my other channel, CyberMath, Cyber with an S. And more channels are coming up. All right, great. So we have 1 plus root 3i. And what about 1 minus root 3i? It's basically the reflection of 1 plus root 3i because the only thing that changes is the imaginary part. And that just means we're going to be looking at negative pi over 3, right? It just changes the angle, negates the angle, in other words. So we can kind of write this as negative pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. But you don't have to use the same integer because you don't know if they're going to be the same, right? So let's use k as instead. So n and k are integers. I think we already talked about it right? And now is a good time to raise them. By the way, I shouldn't be using n because I just realized n is already used 
in my equation. So let's go ahead and use maybe some other variable like, I don't know, maybe t, 2 pi t, is that a good one? Okay, I like t as a drink and as a variable. Uh, I'm not a coffee person, by the way, if you are wondering. Anyway, so let's go ahead and do this. We have 2 times e to the power i times pi over 3 plus 2 pi t. We're going to raise it, remember, the first number on the left-hand side. We're going to raise it to power m. And the other number, which is this one, the second one, we're going to raise it to the power n, right? m and n are integers, remember that. And then the next step is just going to be, you know, using the properties of powers. We're just going to multiply, expand, you know, distribute, whatever you want to call that. But you were, going to, you were going to get something like 2 to the power m and then times e to the power. And in this case, it's just multiply by that. So I am pi over 3 plus 2 pi t. And this one is going to be 2 to the n and then e to the power i n times negative pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. Awesome. Now, what do you do with this? Well, first of all, notice that 2 to the m needs to equal 2 to the power n. So that kind of means that m equals n, right? Can we find a solutions where m and n are different? That's a good question, and that's for you to explore. But I'm just going to assume that they are equal because they look like they're equal. And then we get this another inequality, I mean another equality, I should say, and that gives us the following. The i cancels out, so we can write this as m times pi over 3 plus 2 pi t equals n times negative pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. And of course, we can go ahead and distribute or multiply both sides by 3 first, maybe, right? That's going to give us m times pi plus 6 pi t. It's a little easier without fractions, as you know, negative pi plus 6 pi k. And now you can go ahead and distribute, maybe. You get m pi plus 6 pi mt, and then negative n pi plus 6 pi kn. Great. Now, everything has pi in it, so we might as well divide both sides by pi as well, right? I just realized m plus, so I could have done that earlier, but anyways, m plus 6 mt equals negative n plus 6 kn. And of course, in this case, we can kind of factor out an m and write this as 60 plus 1 multiplied by m, and that is 6k minus 1 multiplied by n. Well, didn't we just say that m and n are equal? Well, yes, but how do you satisfy this equation, right? I mean, can m and n be 5 at the same time? That's a good question. Let's go ahead and find out. Suppose they're both 5 because we know that they have to be equal, right? So from here, we get 30t plus 5 equals 30k minus 5. Put the k and t together. 30 times t minus k is equal to a negative 10. Uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem because t minus k cannot be a fraction because t and k are both integers. Remember that? So this is not good. That means you can't use any number instead of m and n. They have to be special. What is that special number? That's actually for you to find out. But there's an easy way to do it. If you think about it, m can be something like 3, because that should give you a pi here. But on the right-hand side, you're going to be getting a negative uh, 3, or negative pi, which is going to give you a negative number. So you need to make sure m and n are both even, so that the negative can be taken care of. So that brings us to the results from Wolfram Alpha and to the end of this video. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to check out A plus B I and Cybermath, and bye-bye.